Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to the last video of the Canary Island series. Like always, there have been blocks. Last video there has been a how much the trip was and this video is going to be about what to consider and what to have in mind if you plan to go to the Canary Islands yourself with a lot of tips, tricks, do's and don'ts and stuff like that. As a disclaimer, I spent 14 days on three different islands, which were Fuerteventura in the south, then a day trip to Lobos Island, then Lanzarote, and then back to Fuerteventura for the north and to fly out again. So I gathered a little bit of knowledge about these islands, which are part of Spain. Also, they lie next to the African continent. And now without further ado, let's start into the categories. For transportation, the most important thing in my opinion is rental cars. And under the last video, someone commented that he only paid 90 euros for seven days. I actually paid 450 for 14 days, which is way more expensive, but at the time visiting there were no cars available. So the ones that were still there were really, really pricey. So maybe check that out beforehand, maybe even when planning, booking flights and hotels. Also check out the rental cars by then to see how the prices are. When you are there and you got a car, there are some things to consider. For example, we tried to get to the most southern part of Fuerteventura and we were not allowed to go there because the uh, streets are kind of rough and rocky and it was forbidden and there seemed to be a GPS tracker in the car because we got a phone call from the rental company and the guy said, you are not allowed to be there. so. Uh, yeah, better get out of there. But in the end, it was still cool. We didn't have to pay anything for that mistake because we didn't do it on purpose. And um, also, yeah, it was quite chilled. So no problems on that part. But if you want to go everywhere, maybe consider to get an SUV or something like that. But for most of the parts, you will be totally fine with a normal car. Another thing coming into play with transportation is the ferries, obviously. There is a port in the north of Fuerteventura and from there you can do the day trip and also that's the ferry to Lanzarote. So quite easy, you can just go there, um, get a ticket and then drive over. It's a little pricey, but yeah, to see multiple islands with in one go is really cool to me and my kind of travels so i really liked it and 14 days just on one island for me that would have been way too much time so yes to spread it on three islands was totally perfect food wise the canary islands are islands so there is a lot of seafood around and you can get a lot in different restaurants. I cooked for myself the whole time and as I'm vegan that wasn't too easy all of the times because there are little to no options uh, for substitutes but yet still it was possible with just a lot of generic stuff so no problem at all but yeah could have been better but could have been worse, so totally fine with that. If you are eating seafood, I think you will be really happy because it's all fresh over there. Accommodation wise, like always, there's Airbnb, that's what I used and that's easy like always, really friendly people that you might meet with doing that, but there are also like all inclusive um, resorts or uh, hotels and you can choose those options as well and as I heard they are not too expensive either so you have to choose your style of travel and what you want to do and as I'm on the road almost all day every day it doesn't make too much sense to be in the hotel or the accommodation for too long anyways so I always pick rather something where I have a kitchen to cook something for myself and where I am able to to get a good night of sleep. My experience with the people were absolutely fine and well. There is quite a van life and quite a 
hippie community, especially on the beaches where the good surf spots are. There are really cool and chilled people hanging around. Everybody is friendly, so I really enjoyed that. Um, had a few little encounters with police coming by, but they were totally chilled as well, always friendly. Never had any issues at all, even though sometimes I'm a little nervous driving a rental car somewhere else and then police is passing by and I'm like, I didn't do nothing. Like, I didn't do nothing, but I still, I want to look like I did nothing which makes it kind of hard. But yeah, for beaches and activities, yes. Beaches is one of the main points to get to the Canary Islands and also the weather because it's good all year round, but that's going to be the topic in a minute. But beaches, absolutely fine and breathtaking. Um, depending on where you are, they are either sandy, they're a little rocky, or they're like cliffs and rough. <laughs> but yeah, going to the beach is one activity, the other one, hiking for sure. There are so many beautiful and lonely paths to take. We were hiking a lot just by ourselves, nobody passing by. You can climb volcanoes, different rocks, mountains, and as the area is so widespread and there are so many different options, everybody gets kind of lost on their own paths and you don't meet too many people. But if you do, they're always nice and in a good mood because that's how it is. And the mood and the vibe is just chilled, relaxed and sunny. Time now for your latest weather forecast. Talking of sunny weather, as I said, it is good almost all year round. The chart is all over the place. What you have to consider is it is quite windy almost all of the time, which is quite good for other activities. If you're like windsurfer, a surfer, those are activities coming on top, so that was the last topic, but now I'm mixing up two topics in one. <laughs> so that is also quite nice, but it can get quite annoying as well when it's windy all the time and you try to fly your drone and stuff like that. And also it is quite dangerous to get a sunburn because you don't feel the heat that much because the cool wind is cooling you down and you don't feel it that much. And that is due to it's in the middle of the ocean, so it's quite windy, and there's little to no vegetation, so nothing to break up the wind, and also little shade to hide from the sun. So double dangerous, so have in mind, put in some sunscreen and also put it on. This time we skip on the snorkeling and diving part because of all the wind. I think it's not too well suited for those activities. I skipped on it in total. I'm not really sure if it was even available. And that brings us to the next topic, which are the rapid fire questions. So we'll try to get to a lot of questions in a short time because I already talked too much. So the most valuable item, as I already told, why is the sunscreen, the style of clothes, rather pack something light and yeah, for warm weather, but also consider having something to protect from the sun. Sun hat, which stays on tightly because of the wind, is pretty necessary. Hiking shoes, stuff like that. Or if you just want to chill on the beach, put on your bathing suits. The missing item this time, there really wasn't none because everything was available. Like there are supermarkets all over the place, places to shop. So I didn't really missed anything that I didn't pack anyways. So best place in my opinion is everywhere because each and every section of all of the three islands has their advantages. There is something to explore or something to do almost everywhere. So you can't really go wrong except the overrated places. In my opinion, some of those multi-pass, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out all the videos because there is a multi-pass. 
you can purchase and then you can get into different locations with that and in my opinion some of those locations were a little overrated for me it's not really necessary to go there and see all of them i'm not too much of a museum guy no small little creatures were kind of cool but yeah the caves they were quite nice but yeah you don't have to do all of them the cacti garden was quite nice but even not really necessary and a little bit overrated in my opinion the spoken language obviously is spanish because it's a spanish country but you will get along with english absolutely fine but it's always nice to have some words at hand so here are some in spanish if you want to say hello it's hola goodbye you simply say adios thank you say gracias if you want to say please say por favor and si is yes and no is no easy as that for the currency as of the canary islands are part of spain and spain is part of europe it's the euro and one euro by now is one dollar eleven cents and the other way around one dollar gives you 90 cents who are the canary islands for in my opinion for hippies van lifers but also for water sports enthusiasts and for hikers and on the other hand around who is it not for in my experience party people because i think that's not too much party going on maybe inside the all-inclusive hotels there might be a little bit but apart from that not too much which makes up for the mood and the vibe so i think it's quite a good part but yeah if you're into that maybe go to a different island maybe even another spanish one like mallorca which might be one of my next destinations who knows make sure to hit subscribe if you want to find out for the question about tours and guides in my opinion do it all on yourself it is absolutely easy no problems whatsoever so you can be self guided and yeah just plan where you want to go which is quite easy and then take a rental car and go there on yourself you don't really need a guide for anything um, but yeah in some places like in the in the lava caves you can't go there on your own you have to uh, purchase a ticket and then there is going to be a guide but for the overall experience i would say skip all the tour buses and <laughs> go on your own internet and phone didn't concern me this time too much because my european sim card worked just well and fine if you don't have one i think it's a little bit more complicated because purchasing one is a little more complicated move on to safety an absolute safe country no problems on those islands with feeling unsafe or stuff like that i heard about break-ins into vans though so if you're around with the van you should have a proper alarm system and also for gas like there is a gas alarm system something like that and i heard that is uh, actually an issue if you're standing somewhere remotely and also you should always be quite aware of the coastline the rough and rocky cliffs the waves so always if you go into the water make sure that it's safe and you don't put yourself in danger unnecessarily for the visa it goes the same as for the sim card as a european i didn't need a visa at all but yeah for all the other countries europe is kind of all the same everywhere so getting a visa isn't too hard depending on your passport obviously but for us it was just getting in easy peasy lemon squeezy the culture shock was none because europe is western so yeah especially for me as a european there was no culture shock at all and i think even if you're from the us as most of you are then it is not that much of a shock because it's not too different culture wise 
in terms of scams i think it's just basically the the good old stuff like be careful with rental cars um, always be a little bit careful when buying souvenirs and stuff that gets a little scammy but uh, especially in Tegis on the market I'm not sure if everything is legit but you will find beautiful souvenirs over there and um, yeah be careful with purchasing uh, shells rocks lava stones stuff like that because uh, there you might get some problems with taking those out of the country and you shouldn't do that morally anyway but yeah those are scams which um, take place all over the world but i didn't heard of any specific scams to the canary islands what else is there to say not too much the tip that i already did is do multiple islands because they are quite close you can get over with the ferry really easily and you are allowed to take the car with you so that made sense for me as well to uh, rent a car on one island for the whole time and then bring it over to the other island um, and then drive over there and then get the car back so that is quite easy because you just do it with one rental and then you're good to go for almost everywhere we also thought about going to Gran Canaria but maybe that's for another time. And last but not least authenticity and in my opinion the vibes as I said is quite cool and as you can get all out on yourself the feeling just comes down on you and you will be like in the mood and in the place and somehow kind of lost and I, I already told in the first videos of the vlogs it's kind of moonish it's like in in another world but also there are quite some touristy places and that feels way different so make sure to yeah have a good feeling on what you want and what you expect from that trip and then you can find the right spot to fulfill those needs i guess and with that being said my needs are pretty much in southeast asia all of the times and that's why that's the next location as i said sri lanka is the country of choice i hope i get the teaser running in time and then that's going to be the next video but after that um, there's going to be a video about getting into the country and then uh, about the cultural triangle and then vlog after vlog after vlog. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. I know I said it a third time and it gets quite annoying. Leave a like if you found this video helpful. I would love to see you in the next video. I'm going to be there. I hope you too. And until then, see you somewhere sometime. Enjoy life. Good night, and thank you for watching.